Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today on Level Up Law. We're here at Legal Services of South Carolina. We are leveling up your legal knowledge on the different areas of law that we handle. I'm Susan Ingalls, Senior Staff Attorney with South Carolina Legal Services. I'll be the host of the webinar today, along with producer Kenneth Elliott from our IT department at South Carolina Legal Services. We are joined by our lead foreclosure attorney, John S. Owens from our office in Conway, South Carolina. John will be helping us understand reverse mortgages. What are they and how do they work? If you're considering a reverse mortgage, this information is gonna be real helpful to you. As you view today's presentation, do remember this is not legal advice, but just general information for the public. Always consult with an attorney for any specific legal problems that you have. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we will provide information on how to apply for free legal assistance here at SC Legal Services, as well as how to access all of the public information and resources that we have on our websites. As always, a recording of the webcast will be posted on our YouTube channel for SC Legal Services later this week, along with the slides that John will be using today. So please go there, check it out like and subscribe and uh, turn on the notification so you'll always know when we post a new episode. Again, thanks so much for joining us. And John, let's go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, as uh, Susan said, we're uh, doing understanding reverse mortgages today. Um, <clears throat> So the first question, of course, is what is a reverse mortgage? Um, now, I, or one of the most common types of reverse mortgage, the home equity conversion mortgage, um, is a special type of home loan that's only for homeowners who are 62 and older. Like a traditional mortgage, they allow the homeowners to borrow money using the home as a security for the loan, and it allows the title to remain in your name. Unlike a traditional mortgage, you're not gonna be making monthly payments. The loan is repaid when the borrower no longer lives in the home. Um, the interest and fees are added to the loan each month, so the balance grows rather than goes down. Um, and the homeowners are required to uh, continue to pay property taxes and home insurance, um, use the property as their principal residence, and keep the house in good condition. Um, because the or interest and fees are added to the loan each month, the amount the homeowner owes to the lender goes up rather than down over time. Um, and as your loan balance increases, your home equity will be decreasing. Um, so the borrowed interest plus or borrowed money plus the interest plus the fees each month um, leads to that rising loan balance. Um, homeowners or their heirs will eventually have to pay back the loan, usually by selling the home. Now, when you're considering a reverse mortgage, uh, watch out for scams. Um, one of the more common ones are contractors. If you're looking for repairs to your home, they might try and talk you into get a ring or getting a reverse mortgage to pay for it. Um, do not let yourself be pressured into getting a reverse mortgage loan just to pay for repairs. There's a good chance that that might be a scam. You definitely want to take your time and think about a reverse mortgage before you do anything like that. Um, now, some mortgage uh, ads falsely promise veterans special deals, imply some sort of VA approval, or offer no payment reverse mortgage loans to attract any older Americans desperate to stay in their homes. Um, the Department of Veterans Affairs does not offer any reverse mortgage loans, so um, there is nothing actually special for veterans for the uh, reverse mortgages. Uh, now, when you're when you do decide to get a reverse mortgage, you have, um, in most cases, a three day or three business days after the loan closing to cancel the deal for any reason without penalty. Um, this is known as your right of rescission. After you cancel the loan or the lender has 20 days to return any money that you paid for the financing of the or reverse mortgage loan. Um, and in order to cancel, you have to notify your reverse mortgage lender in writing send your letter by certified mail and ask for a return receipt so you have proof that you did this. And of course, you should keep copies of this and any other communications between you and your reverse mortgage lender. 
Um, now, most of this information only applies to the home equity conversion mortgages, um, which are the most common type of reverse mortgage loans. Um, now, when you're deciding whether or not to take a reverse mortgage, you should look at other borrowing and housing options first. Um, don't rush out and do it right away. If you take it when you're too young, you might run out of money when you're older and uh, end up having less money to pay your regular or property costs. Um, you might have less income to take care of health care bills and things like that. Um, so, you know, that that reverse mortgage money that's coming in um, doesn't last forever. In most cases, it will not last until you're or until you die. There are times it will cut off early. Um, you also want to look into some other home equity options. Um, a home equity loan or a home equity line of credit might be a cheaper way to borrow that money against your equity. Um, those loans do carry their own risks and you have to make monthly payments, but um, they cost tend to cost less and usually at the end, you know, you're paying it off instead of, you know, having the entire thing due when you die or sell or move out. Um, qualifying for those loans also depends on your income and credit, of course. Um, you could also look into refinancing your current mortgage with a new traditional mortgage to lower monthly mortgage payments. Um, pay attention to the length of time that uh, you'll have to repay that new mortgage as it can re uh, affect your retirement plan. Um, if you're uh, looking into downsizing, you might consider selling this home that may be bigger than what you need anymore and moving into something smaller that uh, is more affordable and might reduce your overall expenses. Um, and there are also state and local programs that may be able to provide assistance with utilities, home repairs, um, things like that. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> now, other things to think about before applying for a reverse mortgage loan. Um, if you are considering a reverse mortgage loan, start by understanding how one works and how it's going to affect you now and in the future. Um, a detailed discussion with a reverse mortgage counselor will give you some important information to decide whether this is right for you. Um, for the more common home equity, or conversion mortgage, um, you do actually have to receive counseling from a HUD approved reverse mortgage counselor before you can get it. Um, but you can talk to a, re a reverse mortgage counselor even if you're thinking out, or even if you're just thinking about taking out a reverse mortgage loan. You don't actually have to get one to do that. Um, now, not anybody can uh, or qualify for a reverse mortgage. Um, for a home equity conversion mortgage, um, there are, it's only available to homeowners who are 62 and older. Um, aside from, aside from that age requirement, um, there are other requirements, including that your home must be your principal residence. It must be where you live at least the majority of the year. Um, you must either own your home outright or have a low enough mortgage balance that you can pay off the mortgage with the reverse mortgage funds or your own funds before you get the reverse mortgage. Your home has to be in good shape. Um, they're gonna do an inspection and make sure that you know it meets their standards. Um, and if it doesn't meet their standards, they're gonna tell you what you need to do to fix it up in order to qualify. Uh, you might, or you cannot be delinquent on any federal debt such as income taxes or federal student loans. Um, you can, however, use funds from the reverse mortgage to pay off that debt. Um, you have to agree to set aside a portion of the reverse mortgage funds at the loan closing or have enough of your own money to pay ongoing property charges, including taxes and insurance, as well as maintenance and repair costs. Um, you also, of course, have to receive that counseling from a HUD-approved reverse mortgage counseling agency. Um, in order to discuss your eligibility, the financial implications of the loan, and other alternatives, make sure you understand what you're actually getting yourself into. Um, now, reverse mortgages do have some upfront costs. 
Um, this will vary depending on the type of the loan and the lender you choose, um, but a reverse mortgage is usually more expensive than other home loans. With a reverse mortgage loan, you will owe the money you borrowed as well as interest and fees. And unlike the traditional mortgage loans, the amount that you owe on the reverse mortgage will grow over time. Um, of course, as I said, you have to uh, receive mortgage counseling um, before taking out the loan, and those costs will vary depending on the agency and your situation. Um, the agent or the counseling agency will determine what sort of ability you have to pay for things, including income and debt obligations. Um, they may charge or the counseling agency may charge you a reasonable fee. Um, but they can't charge you if you, if you can't afford it, and they do have to or explain all of their charges prior to the counseling. Um, other upfront costs, uh, there is generally um, some one-time upfront costs, including origination fees, which are currently capped at $6,000 and are paid directly to the lender. There are also real estate closing costs, which are paid to third parties, um, that might include an appraisal, title search, surveys, inspections, recording fees, mortgage taxes, credit checks, and other fees. Um, and then there's also an initial mortgage insurance premium. This is not the same as your homeowner's insurance. This is an insurance um, premium that your lender charges um, and pays to the uh, Federal Housing Administration. And this mortgage insurance guarantees that you actually get your or loan advances. Um, now you have the right to pay these costs in cash or you can use the money from the loan. Um, if you do use those loan proceeds to pay for these costs, you won't have to bring anything to the closing, but the total money you get out of the reverse mortgage will be lower. Um, ongoing costs are going to be added to your loan balance each month. This means that um, each month you're charged interest and fees on top of the interest and fees that were added from the previous month. Um, those might also include interest, serving, or servicing fees paid to your lender to cover costs. Um, that might include sending you account statements, distributing your loan proceeds, and making sure you keep up with the loan requirements. Um, there's, an, again, the annual mortgage insurance premium, which is one half of a percent of the outstanding mortgage balance. And property charges such as homeowners insurance and property taxes. And if you're in a flood zone, flood insurance. Uh, larger, or the larger your loan balance and the loan, or longer you keep your loan, uh, the more you will be charged in ongoing costs. Um, so the best way to uh, keep those ongoing costs low is to only borrow as much as you need. Um, again, this, this information only applies to the home equity conversion mortgages, which are the most common type of reverse mortgage. Um, if there, there are some other uh, types of reverse mortgage, but we're not really going to get into those because you probably won't run into them. Um, now, your borrowing limit is called the principal limit. It, when they calculate how much that limit is going to be, they take into account your age, the interest rate of the loan, the value of your home. Um, generally, loans with older borrowers, higher priced homes, and lower interest rates will have higher principal limits than the loans with younger borrowers, lower priced homes, and higher interest rates. Um, if you're married or co-borrowing co with another person, the principal limit is based on the age of the youngest co-borrower or um, a eligible non-borrowing spouse. If you're married to someone who's not going to be a co-borrower, they're gonna consider their age as well. With a uh, reverse mortgage, you have three main options for receiving your money. The first option is a line of credit. Um, this has a lower cost than a uh, lump sum payment because you'll only be paying interest and fees on the money you use. The line of credit, basically you borrow the money as you need it um, and they just disperse it based on what you ask at each time. Uh, you can use the line of credit um, growth feature that allows you to borrow some money now and leave some credit available later in the future. 
Uh, whatever you don't use in your credit line will keep growing, allowing you to borrow up to a maximum amount stated in your mortgage. Um, this can be combined with a monthly payout if that's what you want to do. Um, the monthly payout option or lets you set up a monthly payout to supplement your income. So this is where they're giving you a certain amount each or each month. Um, now you have two choices with that option. You can either have it for a fixed term, which is a set number of years. So they pay fixed monthly payments for X number of years, or they have the 10 year option, which is fixed monthly payments as long as you remain or maintain the reverse mortgage stay in the home, do all the things you're supposed to do up until you hit the balance of the maximum principal um, limit. So that could go indefinitely, but at some point you will hit that limit. So it's not forever. Not guaranteed to be as long as you live either. Um, now the lower cost than a lump sum payment um, because you're paying interest only on the money you've drawn so far. Um, and again, this can be combined with a line of credit. So you can have a fixed uh, payment for a certain period of time um, while also having a line of credit where you can borrow for more un or unexpected or less um, predictable costs. Um, now, the third option is you can borrow it as a lump sum with a fixed interest rate. Um, now, in that case, you would withdraw all of the available funds up until the principal limit all at once. Um, the amount may be lower compared to other payment options um, because it costs more because you're paying interest on and fees on the entire amount all at once. Um, there is no credit line growth feature, and uh, this is higher risk for younger borrowers because you may um, end up outliving your loan funds. Um, again, these are your options for a home equity conversion mortgage, which is the most common type. We're not in, or addressing the other types of uh, reverse mortgage out there. Now, when do you have to pay back a reverse mortgage loan? Typically, you're gonna have to repay this uh, when you move out of the home or when you die. Um, however, it can be sooner if the home is no longer your principal residence, um, if you fail to pay your property taxes or homeowner's insurance, or if you don't keep the home in good repair. Um, most home equity conversion mortgages um, have to be paid off when the last surviving borrower or the eligible non-borrowing spouse, which I'll explain in a moment, um, when either they die when they sell the home or they no longer live in the home as their primary residence. Um, they might move out because they want to st or live closer to family or they might be downsizing or they could just be moving into assisted living or nursing facilities. So, you know, if the borrower ends up having to go to a nursing home, um, that triggers the requirement to pay back the, uh, the reverse mortgage. Now, I mentioned this eligible non-borrowing spouse. Um, this is the term that's, if you're married when you borrow, um, but your spouse is not a co-borrower, um, there are certain rules that um, the Department of H or Housing and Urban Development set out to decide whether or not they get to stay in your home after you died or, after, or until um, they die. <coughs> um, so we'll talk a little bit about that later. Now, if you take out a reverse mortgage on the loan, or sorry, if you take out your reverse mortgage, uh, does the lender own your home? That is not the case. Um, like any mortgage, the, the title to the home is in your name and they have a lien on the home, a mortgage. Um, most reverse mortgages are home equity conversion mortgages um, and the Federal Housing Administration um, ensures those mortgages just like a traditional mortgage, um, the, the reverse mortgage, you're borrowing money and using your home as security for that loan. Um, you continue to pay for the property taxes, homeowners insurance, and maintain the home. And if you don't do those things, the mortgage company can foreclose on the home. Um, but the home equity conversion mortgages also require you to use the home as your pr or principal residence. And if you don't do that, they can also foreclose on the home. 
Um, if you move out, if you sell your home, or if the last surviving borrower um, or eligible non-borrowing spouse dies, you or the estate will need to repay the mortgage, um, but you never owe more than the value of the house. Um, so if you can't repay the mortgage, they basically foreclose on the home and it's just gone. Um, the loan balance will include the amount you've received in cash plus interest and fees that have been added to the loan balance each month. To repay the loan, you or your heirs may have to sell the house to do that. Um, now, what happens if you already have a reverse mortgage and you receive a notice of default or foreclosure? One thing that's important is you act quickly. Do not ignore this or do not set it aside and forget about it. Um, if you don't act on it, you could lose the home to foreclosure. There are several ways you might fall into default. Um, the, or the first option is that you might have been late or missed paying your property charges. So you might not have paid your property taxes or you might have let your homeowner's insurance lapse. Um, if there was flood insurance premiums, ground rents, condominium or condo or HOA fees, those also um, need to be maintained. And if you don't, that could also trigger a default. Um, another possibility is that you failed to keep the home in good condition. They sent someone by and saw the place was falling apart. And if you're not maintaining your home, they're going to, you know, do what they need to do to protect their security. Um, the other possibility is that you did not occupy your home as your principal residence. Now, unless you take the steps to fix this default, the lender can start foreclosure proceedings and that may very likely end up with you losing your home. Now, if you don't pay your taxes or insurance, um, some of the options you have, um, if you can afford to pay the taxes and insurance now, go ahead and do it. Um, oh, sorry, it looks like we lost, uh, where were we? Not sure why it got dropped out there, but um, let me find where we were. Not sure where that went. Aha, sorry about that. <coughs> um, if you can afford to pay your property taxes and insurance, go ahead and do that. Um, get that sent out right away. Um, you might have to send it to the reverse mortgage servicer if they already paid it, or you might need to send it directly to the tax authority or insurance company if the servicer hasn't paid it already. Now, if you can't afford to pay your taxes or insurance um, and you're already received the notice of default or foreclosure, you're gonna wanna talk to a um, reverse mortgage housing counseling agency or an attorney um, or both. Uh, you might also wanna reach out to state and local assistance programs as someone out there might have some money to help you get caught up. Now, if you're, um, if they're, if the default is based on your failing to keep your home in good repair, um, the first thing you wanna do is contact the servicer and find out exactly what they're saying needs to be fixed um, and ask them to send you a list of that in writing. Uh, once you know what needs to be fixed, you can look into whether you can afford to fix it. If you can afford to pay for the repairs, shop around, get estimates from several contractors, um, to make sure you're getting the best deal, but also a reputable contractor. Make sure that the written contract of the work um, that they're going to be doing matches the verbal promises made by the contractor. Um, and if you can't afford to make the repairs, um, you're gonna wanna contact the local area agency on aging to see if they have any programs to, uh, that are available to assist older homeowners with repair costs. Um, now, if your uh, default is based on your failure to live in the home as your principal residence, um, important things to be aware of are every year the reverse mortgage borrower is required to submit a written certification that their home is still their principal residence and that their contact information is up to date. 
Um, now this default might be because you, the that certification got lost in the mail or you forgot to return it. If you're still living there and you just and this is what happened, contact the servicer, see if you can get that fixed. Um, find out ways that they're going to need to verify that you're still living in your home as your principal residence. If you're not living in the home as your principal residence, then you are in default and you're going to either have to pay back the mortgage or let them foreclose or sell the home. Uh, <clears throat> some other frequency, or frequently asked questions. Can I use a reverse mortgage to buy a home? Um, technically, yes, there is a uh, home equity conversion mortgage for purchase option that allows people 62 and older to purchase a new principal residence with the home equity conversion mortgage loan proceeds. Um, uh, reverse mortgage for purchase loan requires that you be 62 years and older and that the home that you're pr purchasing will be your principal residence. You're going to have to have cash available for a down payment. Um, there are also going to be some closing costs, which are generally higher than those with other reverse mortgage loans. Um, some of those closing costs might be paid by the seller, um, but not necessarily. So it's a good idea to shop around and talk to multiple lenders um, to make sure you are happy with what you're getting. Um, if you are doing this for a purchase loan, you'll need the cash available to pay the difference between the uh, proceeds from the reverse mortgage and the sales price um, plus any closing costs. So if the reverse mortgage is going to be less than um, the actual cost of the home, which is going to be very normal, they're not gonna or lend you more than what the home is worth, you're gonna have to have some money on your own as that down payment. Um, like all reverse mortgage loans, you will not have to make monthly payments on the mortgage. Um, However, you will st still need to fulfill all the normal reverse mortgage requirements, such as living in the home, keeping the home in good condition, and paying your property taxes and insurance premiums. Um, now, not all properties are eligible for the uh, HECM for Purchase program. Um, for instance, co-op units and some manufactured homes are not going to be eligible. Um, as I, uh, I think we discussed earlier, you do have the right to cancel a reverse mortgage within three days after the closing. Um, and that's your right of rescission. You have to do this in writing. And we recommend you do that by certified mail with a return receipt so you have proof of what you sent and when you sent it and that they got it. Um, of course, keep any other or communications between you and the lender as well. Now, after you cancel, the lender has 20 days to send back any money you've paid. So those closing costs, down payment, things like that. Um, if you believe that there's a, a reason to cancel the loan after the three-day period, you're gonna wanna talk to a lawyer to see if you have any rights to do that. Um, now, the next question is, can my partner, family, or dependents live in the home if I have a reverse mortgage? Um, as long as you're still living in the home, there's nothing in the reverse mortgage restricting who else can live with you. Uh, most reverse mortgages today are the home equity conversion mortgages and the Federal Housing Administration um, ensures those and as long as you still live in the home that, that doesn't affect who can live with you. If you die or move out of the home the people who live with you might not be able to stay there though. They may have to move when you do. Um, if you are a co-borrowing, um, if you're co-borrowing this reverse mortgage with a spouse or someone else, the co-borrower can stay in the home even if you die or move out. Um, but if you're living in the home with a non-borrowing spouse or partner, um, if you move out, they don't get to stay. But if you die, they may be able to qualify under certain guidelines established by HUD. Um, there's er, um, but as in, or again, if you move into a nursing home or some other facility for more than 12 months, that protection doesn't work for them either. Um, now, children, relatives, or other dependents who are not co-borrowers on the reverse mortgage 
they don't have any of these protections. So when you die or if you or sell or move out, they're gonna have to move out or they're gonna have to come up with the money to pay off the mortgage. Um, now most borrowers or their heirs will need to sell the home in order to repay the reverse mortgage. With the uh, FHA insured um, more, or reverse mortgage, if the uh, loan balance is more than your home is worth, you don't have to pay the excess, um, just what the home is worth. After you or your heirs sell the home, the lender will take the proceeds from the sale as the payment, and the FHA insurance covers any remaining balance. If you or your heirs would like to keep the home, the loan must be paid off with some other source of funds, like refinancing it, um, but you or your heirs won't have to pay back more than either the full loan balance or 95% of the home's appraised value, whichever one is less. Um, now, do you have to use an estate planning service or pay to find a reverse mortgage? And the answer is no. Um, Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, has a list of approved lenders on their website, which is for free. Um, then referrals to HUD approved housing counselors uh, that can help you determine whether the reverse mortgage is best for you. Um, so just go to that website linked here. Um, or call their housing refer or housing council of referral line at that number right there. That would be the best place to get started. Um, now there are different types of reverse mortgages. Um, those insured by the Federal Housing Administration. Um, there are also proprietary uh, reverse mortgages that are not FHA insured. Um, and then there are also single purpose reverse mortgages offered by state and local governments. Um, most reverse mortgages today out there are the home equity conversion mortgages that are insured by the FHA. Um, some mortgage lenders may offer some of the other or some more proprietary like specialized um, reverse mortgage loans that they offer that are not federally insured. Um, and typically those are for borrowers with higher home values who um, you know, there's, they don't need that extra insurance. Um, and some state and local governments, uh, nonprofit organizations also offer reverse mortgage loans um, for single purposes. Um, those loans can only be used for the purpose specified by the lender, such as home repairs or property taxes. And uh, they may only be available in some areas or only for homeowners with low to moderate income. Um, these are not federally insured, um, so their rules will be very different. Um, how you should shop for a reverse mortgage. Um, if you're interested, you should compare various loan options, fees, and interest rates to make sure you get the features you want and the best deal you can. Now, if you have a co-borrower on the loan, both you and the co-borrower receive the benefits of the loan and are both responsible for meeting those obligations. If one borrower dies, the co-borrower needs to remain in the home, um, but they will continue to receive the loan payments as long as they meet all of those obligations of the reverse mortgage loan. Um, it's a good idea to check with your reverse mortgage servicer to make sure its loan records are correct and you are both co-borrowers. Um, that's a, it's always best to make sure that they did that right. Um, you'll want to call your servicer to find out what names are listed on the loan as the borrowers. Um, you'll want to see the reverse mortgage loan statement number or loan statement and find the phone number on that statement and then you can ask them to send you this information in writing. Um, you can also write them a letter asking for that information. Now if, you're, or if your spouse is not a co-borrower, they are called a non-borrowing spouse. When you die, the, any ongoing payments will stop and uh, they might have to move out if they don't re or meet the requirements set by HUD as, a, as the non-borrowing or eligible non-borrowing spouse. Um, after your death, it's a good idea for that non-borrowing spouse to talk to an attorney or a housing counseling agency right away to make sure they know what they need to do to qualify to stay and if that's even a possibility. 
So when or reverse mortgage loans typically have to be repaid when you die. Um, what, what actually happens will depend on whether you have a co-borrower, um, whether the reverse mortgage was, or when it was taken out because the rules changed, I think in 2014, and whether or not uh, you were married at the time the loan documents uh, were signed and have continued to be married up until the time of your death. So I know this is a wall of text, so bear with me. If your loan was um, assigned after August 4th, 2014, um, in those cases, when the borrower dies, the loan becomes due and payable unless, or it can be deferred if the non-borrowing spouse um, can show that they have legal title to the property or a legal title or legal right to remain in the home for life, and they need to be able to get this within 90 days of the borrower's death. This can be pretty tricky because probate can take up to a year. Um, so this can make things very difficult, but there are ways to make that happen. Um, they also have to be able to show that they were married to you at the time the reverse mortgage documents were signed, all the way up until the time of your death with an exception for couples in a um, same-sex relationship who are legally unable to be married until or at the time that the mortgage was signed because legally they weren't permitted to do so but they still have to have been married at some time or gotten married sometime before they or the borrower died um, if they were specifically named as an eligible non-borrowing spouse in the reverse mortgage loan documents at the time they were, or the loan documents were signed, you also have to show that they currently live in and have lived in the home as their principal residence since the beginning of the reverse mortgage, and they continue to fulfill all of the other obligation of the loan, including keeping the home in good condition and paying the insurance and property taxes. <coughs> Now, if you die and the non-borrowing spouse still lives in the home, or and this uh, reverse mortgage happened before August 4th, 2014, the lender can choose to foreclose or allow for the non-borrowing spouse to um, stay through a mortgagee optional election assignment. Um, the, the main difference here is it's the lender that makes that decision, and um, they have a certain time frame to make that decision. If the lender decides to foreclose or finds that the non-borrowing spouse does not qualify, um, they have to proceed with the foreclosure um, within six months of the borrowing or borrower's death. If the lender or the servicer decides to allow for the non-borrowing spouse to get this assignment um, they have to show that they were married at the time the mortgage was signed or were in that exception for same-sex marriages um, they have to show that they currently live in and have lived in the home as their principal residence since the beginning of the reverse mortgage they have to show that the non-borrowing spouse um, is also going to have, they're going to have to provide their social security number, tax ID number, um, and certify that they understand they're not going to receive any more payments on that reverse mortgage loan, but they will continue to meet all of their loan obligations, keep the property taxes and insurance on the home, and ensure that the reverse mortgage loan does not become doable pay or due and payable for other reasons. Um, the, and of course, the non-borrowing spouse will have to recertify each year um, that they're maintaining all of those requirements. Um, now, what your heirs are gonna need to know about your reverse mortgage loan. Um, if your heirs want to keep your home after you and your spouse die, they are going to have to repay the, either the full loan balance or 95% of the home's appraised value, whichever is less. Um, so you're going to want to talk to your children and your heirs now and make a plan for what's going to happen with any non-borrowing family members in the home. Um, make sure that your adult children or any family members who are living in the home know what to expect when that reverse mortgage comes due. Um, if they want to keep the home, they're going to need to make arrangements to uh, 
um, do that, you're going to want to talk to your reverse mortgage company um, for written information that explains what their options are and uh, discuss that information with the family and follow up with the reverse mortgage company for anything you don't understand. Uh, all right, uh, we're gonna set that out for any questions now. Um, and uh, I believe uh, Susan Ingalls will be helping me with answering those questions if anyone has any. Thanks. Yeah, John, so far we don't have any questions, but I do invite uh, our uh, audience to, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the question box uh, at this time. And while you're doing that, um, I will just thank everybody for uh, attending today. And in particular, I want to thank you, John, for a really helpful presentation on the subject of reverse mortgages. There's uh, quite a few little rules and regulations that I think it sure is important for people to know about when they're thinking about getting a reverse mortgage. There's a lot of stuff that happens and a lot of stuff that's required of folks um, that it's important to uh, know about. So thanks so much for doing that. Um, and all of you who joined us, we really do appreciate your interest in the subject matter today and um, other subject matters that we have covered and will cover in the future. So just remember, uh, Level Up Law is a series of free webcasts that we do every Tuesday at noon here at South Carolina Legal Services and um, hopefully educating you on the common legal issues that we see and giving you some helpful information. All of these can be found on our YouTube channel. So just go to um, SE Legal Services on YouTube and the Level Up Law playlist is where you will find these. And of course, there's other helpful uh, information there as well um, on our YouTube channel. And be sure while you're there, if you found this to be helpful, uh, John's presentation, definitely give it a thumbs up and share it with other people that might uh, benefit from knowing this information. Um, and be sure, again, while you're there, sign up for the alerts and you'll get that notification every time we post a new episode. Okay, you can see on the screen um, all the information about applying for our services. If you need help with a particular legal issue that we can handle, um, so just give a call uh, during the hours there, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 6. That is a toll free call, and we do have folks standing by. If you have to do it after hours, you can apply online 24 7. Um, right there at our lawhelp.org website. Uh, so definitely either call or apply online if you uh, have a legal issue and you think you might be eligible for our free uh, services. And do keep in mind that we also on YouTube on our Level Up Law playlist have an episode that was uh, dedicated to tips about applying online for our services. So if you struggle with the online application process, you can go check that out uh, on our YouTube channel to get those tips that walk you through how to apply online. Um, so don't have any questions at this time. So definitely I uh, want the audience to keep an eye on our uh, Legal Services Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to see what's coming up each week. That's the best way to uh, check on what's going to be coming up. Next week, we'll be discussing immigration relief for survivors of crime. And that will cover things like U visas. So um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Level Up Law today. We look forward to having you back with us next week and every Tuesday at noon uh, going forward. And John, again, thanks so much for a great presentation. And everyone that does conclude today's webinar, have a great day.